talking to Terry about the yard, get compulsory purchase on the yard, but we're going to put a road for it. And he uh, got talking to me about would I be interested in training his fighters because he's going to America for a few weeks and he wanted someone down there with Frank Black, who was another trainer down there. So I said, yeah, I said, uh, all right, I said, I'll help you out. I stayed for a couple of weeks, that's what I've done. And on the day he came back to the gym, I never bothered to go up the gym because I thought, well, he's back now and I had something to do. And um, he phoned me up and said, I want to see you. I've got a proposition to put you So I went down to see him. He said, all the boys want you to be their trainer. So I thought, yeah, that's a bit of a change. We talked about the money side of it and different things worked it out. And uh, that was in 1983. Yeah. That's it started from then. I've been in the game ever since. And you, you, you uh, ended up having a ready-made stable, a decent talent to work Yeah, I walked, in, walked in the deep end. Charlie Magby was my first world champion, yep. even though he didn't put it in the book. <laughs> don't know. Yeah, but he, didn't, he didn't acknowledge that, that fact. No, I don't know. We're gonna have to, right, I'm only joking. We're going to have to buy them all Charlie, and change Charlie's it. Charlie's good to go. He's a nice fellow. Good fire. One of the best fires I've worked with, anyway. Is it, can we tell the story? I mean, I know you're, you're not the man to disparage anybody else, and you, you don't need to, but you said you had a slightly different idea to tell you all about where a boxer should hold his hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did, yeah. You were tell them about the Charlie Magus shadow boxing? Well, Charlie was always had his hands up here. Now, let's take this off. If you've got your hands up there for a 15 or 12, 15 rounds when I was fighting, up there, you ain't going to do it. You ain't going to get through the rounds. You've got to drop them, and when you're away from them, I mean, Ali, they fought Ali Ball in, but they, lots of people done it to that. Jim Tony, when he said, there, look, there's your punching power from there. Charlie was always up there. And I said to him one day, I was in the gym, I was watching him in the gym, he was doing a bit of shadow boxing, a big mirror. And I went, just drop your hands a bit, Charlie, and he dropped them there, and I could hear, almost hear him think, oh, that's comfortable. <laughs> that's comfortable, and he started left hooks and right hands, left hooks and flowing this way, that started to flow. And I, and I thought, I said, that's the way to do it. I said, when you're in trouble, if you get in trouble, then, then you hold them up. Defend. So he'd always come in, as soon as he came in, he didn't say a word, he went back like that, and I thought, well, that's it. I walked away and got with someone else. Yeah. <laughs> well, what was the biggest adjustment you had to make from being a fighter? When you're a fighter, you tend to do things somewhat instinctively as well, to being a coach. What was the biggest difference for you? Well, being a coach, you, 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 you talk about myself, I had some sort of an idea <clears throat> how to train fighters, because the way I used to train myself. Now, I don't think I trained enough myself, but I always got through the rounds. I could always get through eight or ten rounds fighting. But it's more intense today. I think if I'd have had someone like around me like myself or Mark to say, now listen, rest, do that, rest, do that. Because your rest is just as important as your work. Yeah. If you, and you've got to live the life to be a professional fighter. You've got to live it. Well, I don't think I lived it really when I look back on it. That's why I try to express on the fighters that yeah. I'm around, live it. Especially if you've got someone like Billy Joe, live it because he's got the talent to be world champion. But he's got to live it, otherwise he won't be world champion. But it, you know, I mean, he could get beat by a better person. That's, either, you know, that's one of them things. But uh, yeah, I adapted it pretty quick. I knew when to when to work them hard. In fact, when I was up with Royal Oak doing the pad say with Bruno, he'd get out and I'd say to Frank, Frank, give him an easy one on the floor. That's groundwork. Uh, this one, Jimmy Max, going, give him an hard one. Give him an easy. I knew exactly what they wanted. I knew exactly in my head. There was about 19 of them. I'm training every one of them. Not. I knew he was a lot younger then, see? I was up for it, wanted to do it. And I just knew, and it worked. Yeah. Terry used to come in to me, come in to me once and said, Jim, <coughs> uh, Jimmy Max fighting uh, this kid from South London, Irish kid. Jimmy Max for um, Southern area. Anyway, fighting this I'll guy. I think of him for your fingers. Yeah. And um, if he's, <laughs> he's got more memory bank. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> He said, what do you reckon? No, we couldn't have been a summer here, because he said to me, eight or ten. And I looked at the gym, I went ten. Yeah. I knew what they needed, knew what they wanted. And it's, it's very important. Pat Docker. Yeah, Pat Docker, you got it here, Ben. There we go, that's a forerunner of what's going to happen. Job. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he won the trivia. I'm going to give away a signed glove for the trivia, and I'm only going to admit to win it. Yeah. But, Pat Docker, yeah. But yeah, um, it must have been a... I don't think it was a summer here, because he asked me eight or ten. Anyway, I don't know. Well, when you look back over your career, there's obviously been a lot of... I mean, I, I, 
we've spoken a lot over, over the years and known each other in the gym and I've never made a, any secret the fact that I think you are Britain's greatest coach on record um, and I've, I get a lot of support for that view some people say no I think Brendan Ingle I think that's a reasonable view it's just it's not my view and I'm never going to agree with it might be a bit biased but when you look back is there a sweetest moment of all that stands out greatest victory proudest moment anything like that well to be honest with you Ben there's half a dozen and they ain't even been world champions Go on. been eight rounders the times you were happiest then the times you felt most on a high for what you do when you get your check, you know, before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even though sometimes it's about, even though sometimes it's about forty grand too light, eh? oh, we're not going to get into that. And I'm guessing, Jim, I'm guessing also, I have not got a hope in hell of getting you to tell that Chris Pyatt story. No, 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 no. sorry, there's, there's somebody couldn't put in the book. You wouldn't even say it if you turned the camera off, would you? No. He thought about it. <laughs> okay, listen, Jimmy, I've interviewed you an awful lot and I'm, I'm almost in danger of repeating myself by asking Jimmy more questions, so I'd like to throw this one out. Can he be a bit quiet about that? <laughs> we, we, we know you've got hands, please. I'm going to throw this one out to the floor. If any of you have any questions to ask of Jimmy, then please do so now. So I'll speak at once. Anything, Mick? That's the first time I've ever met Jerry. I've done, like, yeah. I was in boxing a long time ago. I've never met him before. And I've never ever thought he'd be the way of some boys either. Although I recognise him in the news. Yeah. Yeah. John, was a, John was an international amateur for Scotland. He bought oh, yeah. 120 amateur fights yeah. and he had um, 15 pro fights. 15 pro fights. Yeah, he, 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 boxed, he, he, he boxed a few people you might remember, like Chubby Mines, the kind yeah. of fella. Yeah. He boxed a. Uh, you managed somehow to get a reversal against Seamus, Casey, no, Dean Bram. Where was that journeyman? There's Dean, Dean Bramwell. Uh, Dean Bramwell. I did box uh, Huey Ford, he was British Super Fairway champion. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And I bought Dean against him, he bossed my ear, knocked my bar on the side of the stuff, and you know, when, you know when you're better than somebody and you yeah. still don't win the bloody fight, and it rankles with you to that yeah. stage, you know what I mean? Like, but, He's good, he's good. I, got, I got beat by a Scottish fighter in the junior ADAs in the finals at the uh, Al Wall. Yeah, his name was Curry. Know. His name was Curry, I'll never forget his name. It was um, a 50 50 fight, like, you know. Right. But uh, he, he beat he me was, in the final. He ended up um, fighting Ian Gibson, didn't he? Yeah. 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 I was going to say, if you see him, tell him I got robbed, but don't say, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, so, nah, I'm since everybody's a, you know, like a mess of questions and curiosity, Do I'm going to... Do you think boxing has changed a lot, Jim, like, in respect to, like, when I was a kid, like, there was, you know, you had your Marvin Aglers and, yeah. and that type. But and you only had one bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. like, even the British, the, the way the British... The, the public imagination, like you get this cable pay per view and everything like that. But when it was on terrestrial television, yeah. Mark Kayla, yeah, you know, yeah. Tony Simpson, and Bruno, that sort Nigel of thing. Ben, but I don't know whether it's me with nostalgia because I was a lot younger and I'd be looking at these people mm. thinking, oh, you know, you want to emulate them sort yeah. of guys. But I don't know, where, you know, nowadays it just seems to be. I think maybe the, the internet and that sort of thing is where it's. You can just. Too easy to access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's changed. So it's changed to the top as well, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's nowadays. Sometimes you don't have to fight to get to the top. No. They get you to the top if you're a good ticket. So I shouldn't be saying this really, but anyway, that's well, the we fact. All know it's the fact. Yeah. Yeah. You see, yeah. Billy Joe round here. He, he's British, Commonwealth, yeah. European champion, so yeah. he deserves a world title. Yeah. yeah, he's done it the old way. Yeah. He's done it the old it's way. bizarre, isn't it? That he's done it like that. And yeah. the Southern area won yeah. first. Southern area yeah. first. Well, it literally is. Is blue for it. Gary Ball. Sorry, I was there. Yeah, yeah, I remember. So that is a perfect example of that. Yeah. But the only case of him getting a world title shot. Well, there you go. That's what I mean. Like everyone was um, astounded by that, really. You know, but what can you say? You say good luck to the kid. He's got a few quick, but yeah. It's all very well saying good luck in it, but we're cannibalising the sport at the same time. It's like yeah. uh, everybody should. I, I mean, I actually think even for training, you should get a world title belt because it takes a lot of sacrifice to turn up at the gym every day, isn't it? Yeah, what bloody good is it hoping you're going to rise to the legitimate top one day? guy out with one punch and be world champion. It can. And um, unfortunately, and it, it is a little bit of an insult to the memory of a Colin Jones or a Tony Simpson. Or... Exactly. 
Yeah. You know, just Paul Terry Mark Downs. Had like, so, uh, you know, you know, um, Gary Jacobs. He did, the, Gary did it the right way as well. He did British European yeah. Club and he came up against Pernell Whitaker and fought Pernell yeah. Whitaker. He had the chance to fight um, <laughs> Eamon Morgan for the WBO <laughs> title, and he know I think it was a WBO yeah, title. Yeah, that's Morgan. right. And he, he said, "No, I'm not interested. If I'm going to fight for a title, I'm going to fight the number one." Sure, yeah. And he and he ended up and he got his crack. Yeah. Went to yeah. and lost that. Oh, there's a there's a trainer that we know on the London scene who had a barbecue recently. And, and everybody brought their belts, you know, he's a stable of fighters, and he's got some decent fighters, he's not a bad trainer, but in the day, there were so many belts, it was like bring a belt instead of a bottle, and you do so, and I couldn't help, but I'm not knocking anybody, and it, it is what it is, but I couldn't help but think of Jimmy, and think, never won any kind of title, and was a really decent pro, you know, could have, perhaps shouldn't have retired, but you did, we discussed it, and could have gone, could have gone places, but it is a bit, I'm not even knocking the fighters, I just think it's a bit ridiculous, the situation. Yeah, there's a lot of belts about now that don't mean nothing, that's just what he's saying. Um, <laughs> yeah. But the young kids who turn pro, they think it do mean something. You know, they really fooled in behind it, really. Yeah. Let's talk, instead of dwelling on the past, let's talk about the future then, and the present to an extent. So, but Billy Joe, he has, a, he has what people call a tune-up, but you can't underestimate it, it's a fight. No, no, it's right. I mean, a lot of people were saying to me, why, should, why are you letting him have a tune-up? Before the So he needs a little tune-up, and that's what he's going to get. He does. Yeah. Shut, shut Give me your thoughts on the, um, the U-Bank fight. Yeah. Did, did it, was, it, was, it, was it the way you expected? Was it a little bit tougher in, in the second half? Or the second half was a bit tougher, but only because I think Joe got carried away with his fans and started to slug it instead of box. Mm -hmm. If it had boxed the way he did the first six, seven rounds, he would have won it easier. But we're satisfied with the verdict, and uh, if he wanted to return, he had a chance to have it. He turned it down. Yeah, Upton mm -hmm. Park, I was so, talking about. So, uh, you know, that'll come again, man. That'll come again. Yeah, you never know what's down the line. Yeah. Well, the main man at middleweight, everybody knows, is Kennedy Golovkin. Yeah. What, what's your appraisal of him as a fighter? Well, he's outstanding at the moment, isn't he? I mean, he blew everyone away. Um, can't knock him for anything, really. Yeah? No. How do you think the fight with him, if, I don't think it's going to happen, but just for the sake of hypothesis, if Floyd Mayweather to fight him, maybe either a 160 or a more likely catchweight, how would you see it going? Well, there's an old saying in boxing, a good big and always yeah. beats a good little. I think so. But what, what about yeah, what, 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 when an exceptional little one fights a, yeah, just a very good one? <laughs> he is exceptional, but he's boring, isn't he? He is a bit boring, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm going to say this, and I, love, and I know you love stylists, and yeah. you love, yeah. you lo I mean, I, when I first met you, oh, I, I might... Sean Robertson, he's stylist, and look what he done. Devastating as yeah, well. Yeah, devastating, yeah. When I first met you, I thought you might have been more in this kind of typical East London vanguard of training, you know, in that box fighter kind of mentality, but you're not actually, you, you love a Willie Pep or a Ray Robinson or a Hamdali yeah, or a Shigoy yeah, Leonard, don't absolutely, you? Yeah. And if you see a guy who's got the talent to drop his hands a little bit stand off, then you, yeah. don't, you don't get on that and say, get your hands up, son. Yeah, yeah. So, he's the way from him, not getting it. So we both like stylists and pretty fighters and still find Floyd Mayweather a little bit boring. Because he's a single Well, I don't mean to be rude about it, because he's undefeated and he is world champion, he's a good fighter. He's probably the greatest fighter, one of the greatest fighters of this generation. Yeah. But um, that last fight, you know, it was a good fight to build up. It was boring, wasn't it? So to be honest, it was, yeah. I mean, it was a bit of an entertainment. We were watching it live, weren't we? All pumped up for it. He, just, put, he just put shorts now. When he was younger, he was... He was watching, really yeah. Yeah. Look at him as a super featherweight. Like, well, he let his hands go. He was yeah. excited. Yeah. 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 That's right, yeah. But then who's going to knock him? He's 38 no. years old. He's, he's done the he's job. He's done an adaptation that works. He's done the job what he had to yeah. do to win that fight. Mm. Yeah. That's what he's done. Oh, all right. Something I wanted to ask was discussing this earlier was about weight with fighters. If they, if they do go up in weight classes, that affects the kind of skills and qualities that they have as a fighter. No. Like punch resistance, no. speed, power, that kind of stuff. No. No. I'll tell you why, though. Look at the Americans. How many weights do they move up? If your body's getting too big for the frame, you've got to move up. Simple as that. You hold it back, you soon you get the weight of drain it off of a bit of weight as a kid. Yeah. It's dangerous. Well, yeah. If you're struggling at the weight, you're yeah. in the wrong weight category. Yeah. <laughs> Someone at the door, Ben. Do you want me to get it? Um, that's all right, don't you? Yeah, let him in. You've got to press that green, Joe. Oh, it's Mick, oh, it's Mick and um, Sam. Talking of weight, just one point. thing, like, it's a person gripe with me, I, I, I don't actually think it's, it's fair, but when you've got a, I mean, you might think something different, but when you've got a fight, they weigh in the day before, and then the next day it can be a stone heavier. Yeah. yeah. That to me just seems yeah. a little bit... That, even more than a stone, 20 pounds sometimes. What well, it, that is, that's a fact, but that's the rules today. Yeah, Would you no, go back to yeah. same day weigh-ins? 
No, not really. No. You I prefer it's more, it's more like safer this way, as long as you're sensible. Right. I don't believe in boiling a fighter down because he's got another extra day's rest. Because you don't recover that quick. No. You know, I don't believe that. Well, how, I, how much I, work does Billy Joe take for him between the women and the Well, I'll tell you that after the fight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Yes. But, Billy Joe just uh, would you go back to the same day and weigh in? He said, I'd like to give up boxing if that happened. <laughs> 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 is, is Joe going to come over and have a word with us before we finish this today? No, 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 no. You go. I'll have a couple of words before we get back to work. Come on, Jim. You stay here, though, Jim. You stay yeah. here. Woo. You can come all the time, mate. I'll get a learner rest. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right, so, Billy Joe, um, assuming everything, nothing unusual happens in the tune up, everything goes fine. Yeah. Um, how, how, um, how do you feel about Andy Lee? I mean, I've asked you this before, but yeah, I've asked you in front of them. I think that people know we come from the same background, from the travelling community. Um, I think there's a lot of private stake with me and him. Obviously, I've got to go to his back garden, back garden to Limerick, the top. Limerick, Limerick, yeah. But you know, I don't see nothing in Andy Lee what you know frightens me. He's a good fighter, but he's not your Glofkin who you think right. Well, I'll wait till he comes down and, and do it. you know he's at his peak. I've seen Andy Lee at his peak, and I think he's had his best performances yeah. against Karabov and Shop in America. And I think now his time is just coming down on the hill a little bit. Yeah, I'm well, the younger man. Do you ever? I mean, obviously you've got the fight you've got WO title shots with Andy Lee. I was just talking about Golovkin with Jimmy just before you sat down. I suppose you do. Do you ever picture a fight with you and Golovkin and how you go back? Listen, he's the man at the moment, isn't he? So you always want to beat the main man. But at the minute, he's, it's his time. Mm. And, uh, you know, he's, he's 29, 30. And I think that, you know, you've got to let him have his time, beat all he can, and just let him get a little bit older of age. And when he's coming down and I'm right at my peak, then I'd love to have a go, yeah? But at the minute, it's a bit too early, that fight. But any other fight, uh, that, and that's, yeah, for, yeah, that's a reasonable assessment, yeah, for sure. If you had to sum up in one sentence what makes Jimmy Tibbs such a great trainer, what would it be? I know, I don't want to embarrass him. No, I think that, you know, I've been with Jimmy since day one and, um, you know, he always knows, you know, if you walk into the gym and he can see you're a little bit fatigued or a little bit tired off and training the week before and he know, just, I mean, I've, for example, I've come to the gym before and he said, go home. And yeah. I'm like, that's how I feel. So, you know, and I think, you know, you don't get many trainers like that and I'm lucky to have like Jimmy in my corner and on the same team to know that sort of thing. And he obviously knows he's a good coach, he's trying the best in the world. Yeah, exactly. Um, fellas, can I get you to both sign a glove? Which I'm going to give away to Mick when he wins a trivia contest later. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, you might, you might have a shirt for the arms. This is a bit, uh, it's a bit fucked up, pen, is it? Yeah. I will. Yeah, no, I will. I'll I'll see what you've got. Silver one. <laughs> you got a silver one? It'd look funny if they signed it twice. That's what I like about it. He's always old, don't have 15 years. 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 If you've got another glove, you can get it signed. Come on, look at him. You can, uh, yeah. Fifteen of them in there. <laughs> 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 a bag of t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, let me get me. You know. do, do, do you want it? Do you want it now, Mick? Or <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna win it anyway. Oh, there you go. Cheers. We're getting quite confused here, aren't we? Let me take the useless one away. They're, they're really cool, old school gloves. Those, aren't they? Oh, they? they look like they signed it back in 1974. Yeah. Bill, yeah. yeah. we'll win you anyway. Cheers, John. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, winning. Yeah. So anyway, listen, Jimmy, I would love to do that first. Cheers. I was just thinking, with obviously Twitter and all that, all the boxes now got sort of an access to get with their fans and all that now. Cheers. <laughs> um, there's this big hype surrounding um, Ben and Eubank free, isn't there? I know it's never going to happen. But has he been in touch? He keeps yeah. in touch now and then, yeah. They were talking about they might fight again, yeah. even now. It's this positive. But they're in the conversation. Yeah. 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 But in any case, this on its own does not at all make. So, Jimmy, we're massively grateful for you inviting us here today. 
uh, and letting us speak for a big addition to all the fans. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Tibbs and Billy Scott Saunders. Thanks, mate. I'll see you Monday.